God's word is the word of salvation. It is the way, the truth, and the life. It is the only way to heaven through his son, Jesus Christ. It's the only way we get there. God is serious about dealing with the sin of the church. chapter we'll look at chapter 17 and then we're going to come in and and look probably at the first four verses briefly and then next week we want to get into uh i might talk a little bit in five and on because this is very interesting Uh, and i I read this quote this morning i want to read you this quote this morning that i think most of you are probably saying thank you And I'll start off with this, then we'll pray. And uh, just, but I wanted to just, I actually screenshotted it because I thought it was a, a, a really good quote. Mm-hmm. Kind of describes our, our world today. When, when, when Paul, I, I, I just going through the life of Paul is just, he's just an amazing dude, if I can call him a dude in our <laughs> lingo today, right? I know Nancy would call him a dude. Yeah. And so Paul is this really interesting character because think about what he's doing. You know, we think, I was thinking about the life of Paul and I was thinking about our life in general, the way we live our life. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this with what I'm going to say, but sometimes I think we look more toward this than we ought to. Most of us want to have this easy peasy life. I mean, I do. I mean, I, I tell my wife all the time. I go, look, you know, I just want the, I just want everybody to leave me alone, stay out of my lane, okay? I'm going, you know, down this lane, and, and I'm not swerving, so don't swerve into my lane and, and cut me off, you know? Just let me live my life, in other words, you know? Let me live my life in peace, you know? Let me just do my thing, and, and I won't bother you if you won't bother me, type of thing, right? You're going to in your lane, you're going fast enough to knock them out of it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go like this, right? <laughs> It's just like, you know, and, and so life, life doesn't allow you really to rest, does it? I mean, it's just, and I was in a mood, you know, like get at home. Fortunately, you know, none of you have to put up with what she puts up with and me, you know, because I get, I get, I can get, I don't know if it's frustration or just, I don't know what you call it. It's, no, it's not out of control. No, it's not even that what I'm thinking of. I can get all, I can be all, I can be all those things. Yeah, so see, you're all telling me how I can be, so that must be obvious. You know. <laughs> well, you know, I just get to this, just leave me alone and I'll leave you alone and, and everybody will be happy, right, type of thing. But the world doesn't work that way, does it? I mean, and I was telling her the other day, I was just like, all we do in this life, is go from one problem to the next problem to the next problem, okay? So you get over one problem, we'll care what the problem tomorrow's going to be, you know? And sometimes we start looking at our problems, and, 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 it, it, and it can begin to detract us from our goals and what we should be focusing on. And, and I'm guilty of it. I'm, I'm a human being like everybody else, you know? I feel the pressures of life. I feel the pressures of the world. I feel the pressures, you know, <laughs> of getting our taxes done. Don't forget taxes are due on Tuesday. Yeah. For all those who owe money, like me, um, you know, pay the government, give Caesar unto Caesar, right? Oh, okay, uh, even if it's, yeah, whatever. So all these frustrations come in, right? And, and the world doesn't really let you rest. And, and I get thinking of Paul. And Paul was up for proclaiming the gospel, but he was up for, if I can say it this way, he was up for the fight. And not for a fight like to dominate, but to lead people to salvation in Christ, right? And so the Jews, uh, before Christ had come and went into the triumphal entry, we just celebrated Easter and we celebrated, you know, Resurrection Day. What were the Jews celebrating? I mean, we kind of talked about this a lot during the Hebrew study on Wednesday night, so some of you weren't there. But... uh, uh, um, what did the Jews practice before Christ came on scene and died and rose and stuff like that? Anybody? The Passover. The Passover, yeah. And can you expand on that a little bit? What about the Passover? 
The law. No, said, some, you said the law. Oh, I said the, the law. That was a good one. The yeah. law. Ten commandments and um, whatever the. All the rituals. Sacrifice. Yeah. The sacrifices, the rituals, the traditions. Right. They would they would sacrifice the animals, and every year one high, one high priest could go into the holy of holies. That was where before the court curtain was torn. Right. They would go into the holy of holies, and they would sacrifice and pour blood on the on the co- ark of the covenant, and uh, you know uh, the judgment seat of Christ and. Now is what we, we, we see is, is what we, you know, the judgment seat. Uh, all of us are going to pa- uh, be in judgment, or all of us will uh, be judged, right? He's appointed unto man once to die, and then the judgment. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and so we're all going to feel the sting of death, and we're all going to stand before Christ someday. But, I, you know, I think of my life's problems, and I think of the problems going on in the world, and there's nothing wrong with wanting to have an easier life, you know, just kind of skating through life, but sometimes I think we want to skate through life without any troubles, and, and just, you know, we'll get to the other side. But Paul, he, he, he was in trouble all the time. You know, he was like, you know, what was he doing? He was going to the synagogues. And the reason I asked about the rituals and the traditions and the law is because he was going into the synagogues where they would be doing these things and teaching the law. And, and now Paul is preaching what? Christ, him crucified. Paul, remember, he's a Jew, right? He was trained by the best, Galileo. He was trained by the best. So he understood the law. But then on the road to Damascus, what happens? He has this transformation. He meets Jesus along the road. And he goes, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know, and then Saul, Paul, turns his name to Paul later. He begins to follow Christ. So what does he do then? He goes, okay, Christ is the answer. Christ is the salvation. And so he's going into the synagogue where they're practicing all these things. And it's really stirring up a ruckus. All of their traditions, all the things that they've done for thousands of years, all of a sudden he's saying, oh no, it's Christ and him crucified is Christ alone. You don't need anybody else but Christ. That's what the writer of Hebrews we've been studying is saying, you know, you don't need anything else but Christ. You know, now in Christ, we become obedient. Well, we should become obedient, right? We should become, become obedient unto wanting to serve God and, and be obedient to Christ. But if you remember what we just came through in Acts 15 and 16, I, I get, kind of gave you the, the history of Paul's uh, missionary journey, right? He goes up. He can't go into Asia Minor like he wants to. He goes up through Troas, and he ends up in Semithrace, and he goes on the outer rim of Asia, and he ends up in Philippi. He ends up talking to the ladies at Philippi, and then he uh, goes on and, and to the other synagogues. And what does he do? He, he just he starts preaching the word, or he starts teaching Christ in synagogues, and they get mad at him. What do they do? They throw him in jail. They throw him in prison. And not only did they throw him in prison, what did they do? They threw him in the inner prison. And not only did they throw him in the inner prison, like you can never get out, they shackled him as well, him and Silas, right? And, and so now uh, they find out who, who he is. The, the, that's the religious leaders. And what do they do? Oh, well, we got to get him out of here. You know, let's let him leave quietly. And Paul says, oh, no, you know, I'm not going to leave quietly. You tell them to come down and let me out. Remember, we went through all this. And so, and, and then I look at this again, and he gets out. And no longer, no sooner does Paul finish up and go other directions. We'll see here in just a minute. Where does he go? He goes right back into the synagogue in a different place where they're practicing the traditions and they're practicing the law. And he tells them about Christ, stirs up the ruckus there. And uh, that's why I think sometimes it'd be fun to be a missionary. You go into the church, you rustle it up a little bit and you can leave, you know. And uh, Because you'll see, that's kind of what Paul did here. You know, he kind of rustled the feathers and he left and they couldn't find anybody. So they find this guy named Jason and a couple of his cohorts and they can't find, find Paul and Silas. So they rough them up instead. But I got thinking about this whole parallel about our, our world. Paul always went into the synagogues, and you'll see here in a minute that he went in for three Sabbaths. He went in for, you know, these three times to teach about this. And then he kind of leaves it with, you know, other people to continue the message. Jason, maybe, perhaps, and his, his uh, colleagues and stuff like that to, to continue the message. And they couldn't find 
Paul and Silas, so what do they do? They, they go after the, the people that were left behind. And it, it's kind of a parallel in our, in our life because what? Christ comes in, he comes into our life, and they can't find, you know, if the, if the pastor's not there, who are they going to go after? The people, right? The world is. The world's going to go after the people. And, that's, and, and why do they want to do that? They want to shut them up. And we'll see it, it's for personal gain, power, control, money, whatever. Uh, and we're going to see more and more of this in our life, I think, as, as we come down this, this path of living in, in this world, this fallen world that we're living. So let's, let's look at verse 17. Um, and uh, maybe if I get time, I'll, I'll get into uh, verse 5. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for all that you're going to show us this morning. And I pray, God, that we wouldn't look for just an easy life, but we would look for a life, Lord Jesus, that is blessed by you. And we can be blessed by you when we do what we're supposed to be doing in your name. So I pray, Lord Jesus, you'll help us to, um, to do all we can to uh, be the light in this dark world, to, to go into the synagogue, the churches, our, our communities, our homes, our wherever we go, Lord God, to preach the gospel, to tell people about Jesus. To convert them over, Lord. So I praise you and give you glory today uh, for what you're going to about to show us and give give us encouragement, uh, motivation, and I pray God that uh, we would just have a heart that just wants to change people for the gospel. I pray in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Here's this quote I was going to give you. Uh, this will make this will make sense, I think. Uh, first. Uh, this is the, really a, the progression of where maybe we are today. It says, first we overlook evil. You know, we just kind of overlook it. We let it just allow it to go on. Then we permit evil. You know, evil then we just kind of, well, that's just the way it is. You know, we, we permit evil. You know, speak out against it. And then we begin to legalize evil. Okay? You could say that probably one of the biggest atrocities we've ever had in this country is abortion. You know, uh, and that's evil. Okay, killing of children. And then after you legalize it, you promote it. Isn't that what we're doing? Especially in all of this stuff that we're seeing in the world today. We, so we've, we've overlooked it, we've permitted it, we legalized it, now we're promoting evil like crazy right now, aren't we? Um, I could go on with a whole kind of stuff of promoting evil. And then once we promote it, then we begin to celebrate it. Okay, we begin to celebrate evil. Uh, yeah, it's a good thing. You know. And then uh, after we celebrate the evil, then what happens is we persecute those who call it evil. That, that's the cycle. Okay. Can you that, that, see those all right and right and Yeah. It, it's first you, you overlook the evil. Okay. Then we permit evil. Then you legalize evil. Then you promote evil. Then you celebrate evil. Then you begin to persecute those, persecute those who call it evil. Mm -hmm. Turn the media off, man. Don't even listen to it. They're not going to give you, if you want to listen to the weather, listen to the weather, but that's about all that's good on there. But, you know, you overlook it, you permit it, you legalize it, promote it, celebrate it, and then you persecute those who are trying to stop the evil. Same thing. You know, Paul was living in this time where, where he was trying to get the synagogues to stop the traditions and celebrate Christ because that's all that's needed now is Christ. So let's look at this, verse 1, in chapter 17, verse 1. Now remember, I just gave you the preface. Where they've all been, they've been in prison, they're back out of prison, okay? And here he goes again. Now when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, okay, then they came to where? Thessalonica. Now, uh, so we have, we have the, you know, the books of the, uh, Thessalonians, right? So we, we know that, okay? Uh, and we're, what was there? It says, where there was a synagogue of who? The Jews. Now you see why I prefaced with the Jews and the traditions of the Jews, okay? So uh, it's the Jews, okay? Then Paul, and his, uh, as was his custom, went into them and for three Sabbaths reasoned with them from the Scriptures. What's Paul trying to do here? You know what they're doing in the synagogue, right? They're trying to convert them to Christianity, to Christ, right? Uh, and so he goes into the synagogue where they're meeting, and do you think this is going to, it'd be like somebody, and, and this is why you have, I think, so many problems in the church today. Somebody comes in, stirs the pot, and leaves, right? Because he's trying, you're, you're trying to be Christ-led. No, you don't need to do all those rituals anymore. You, all you need is, is Jesus Christ. 
And that's what he's trying to, trying to tell him here, you know. And so he goes in and he spends some time with them and says, here's what happened. He probably gives his testimony. Now, do you think that people in the Jewish synagogue at that time had some knowledge of what had happened with Christ? I, I would think they would. We don't see that here. But I would think that it would have been a buzz of everybody, you know. And so some people would go, oh, okay, well, that's what that meant. That's what Christ came. Maybe they were still trying to answer and so answer those questions. And so Paul goes into synagogues, and he's trying to perfect that thought in them. Or maybe not perfect is in the right word, but to get that thought to where you just have to be a Christ follower now. You know, all this stuff and all the rituals isn't needed anymore. Here's why. And do you think there's going to be some resistance? Of course, we know there is, because why? They throw him in prison, and they don't like what he's saying. We saw also um, when they were ministering, they had that, that woman of div divination, remember that? And they were all mad at him, because why? Now he's cutting into their profits. <laughs> so it all comes down to the money, doesn't it? Oh, it comes down to the money. Okay, so he goes um, into, into the synagogues, and he reasons with them during this time, these three Sabbaths, okay? You could say three Sundays, whatever, a Sabbath at the time. Explaining and demonstrating that Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead and saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ, okay? So he's trying to redirect their, their thoughts, their traditions to Christ. They, they, they most likely heard of what had happened during the, during the time of the um, resurrection, the death of Christ, you know, when they were in to celebrate the Passover and stuff, you know. Surely they must have heard of it and, and all that had taken place there. And so he's trying to preach them this Christ. And he goes on in verse 4, And some of them were persuaded, and a great multitude of devout Greeks. These are the Hellenists, probably. Um, you know, remember I, I explained what the Hellenists were? They were like the uh, Greek-speaking Jews. You know, and there was this, remember I, I think way back when, when, there was this tension between the real Jews and the Greek-speaking Jews, and why are they getting all the attention? We're not, and, uh, you know. But these were, these were the Greeks, because where did Paul take the gospel? To, to the non to to the non-Jews, the Greeks, right? That would be the Gentiles. Okay, so he's he's here. So these are the uh, devout Greeks, uh, and I'm I'm you know thinking that these were probably devout Greeks that went in that were probably some out of some of the Hellenist Jew, uh, Jewish-speaking Greeks here. And it says, and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. Now this is kind of misleading in the New King James. You go back into the NIV. And it would say quite a few women followed him, okay? And here it just says not a few, but more than just a few followed him is what it means, okay? And, and this is another example where people think that Paul was a male chauvinist because, you know, how he, he talked about uh, the women in the church and, and he really talked about marriage, man and wife, husband and wife. You get into Ephesians chapter 5, you can... You know, we can have a marriage class later, but, um, you know, what the role of men and women are in, the, in, uh, in the, the way God designed it, okay? But here it shows you that even the women came to believe, all right? So there were, and then we already saw um, Lydia and some others, right? So, um, so here he is, he, he goes in, he's preaching Christ, and some are going, oh, okay, He's probably giving the examples. Well, don't you remember what happened back here? You know, when they were during that week of the celebration, you know, Christ came in, he rode in in the triumphant. He's probably reminding them all these things that happened. They go, oh, yeah, yeah. They go, okay, well, he came to die because he did this, and he did this, he died, so he could have, we could have everlasting life. And I would, I would presume, I know I, I, you should be careful with assuming or presuming anything, but uh, Paul probably gave his testimony because he gave his testimony numerous times, and we can see his testimony in the, in the Scriptures, saying, look, I was a Jew like you. I was probably one of the worst Jews. In fact, I was a persecuting Jew that was persecuting the Christians and hauling them off to jail to be killed. So if anybody, you know, uh, would know this, it would be me. So, so um, he was probably the most qualified to tell them about this Christ and about this Jesus. And so 
When I got in looking at this, um, I got thinking about our evangelism as we are, as we come together and we are Christians. You know, we're, we may not be called to be a Paul like Paul is here, right? But we are all called to go and tell everybody about Jesus Christ, right? And, and why do we do that? I mean, what's the purpose of evangelism? Bring people to Christ? Bring believers? Yeah. Discipleship? You know, that's after evangelism, but discipleship. I was still in Gala this the other night when we were talking about, you know, how we've got this role that we were talking about the roles of men and women and, and why sometimes women want to take the role of men. And, and now we've got this transgender stuff where men want to be in women's sports. And, and then we got this conversation with some other people saying, well, why can't women go into the men's sports? And then I go, well, then I kind of reversed it on them. Well, why can't men go into the women's sports? You know, and, and, you know, and you know where the conversation goes from there, okay? Um, but the, the whole thing is, is what I was telling her, I go, when it comes to our salvation, men and women are equal. They're equal in their salvation. They're equal in Christ. They're, they're, they're equal uh, in every single way. It's just in this physical flesh, God gave us different roles. But in the salvation, guess what? We're equal. There is no hierarchy. And so when we talk about the, the design that God gives us, we have to remember that in our salvation, there is no, you know, I mean, we know what we're going to be like, kind of, in heaven, right? What, how are we going to be transformed? New body. No male or female. No male or female. No marriage. What does that look like? I don't know. I can just tell you what it's going to be like. Okay, but let's go back to this evangelism thing just for a minute. What, what is Paul doing? He's evangelizing. Where, where is Paul evangelizing? Yeah, specifically also right into the synagogues. Right? He was going right to the heart of where everybody was meeting and teaching. And, and so let me just... Trying to continue this conversation for a second. So what should we be doing as Christians then? If Paul's our example, and now again, we may not be called to be the Paul, but what should we be doing? We should be going out to all areas to evangelize. Right. And how do you do that? How do you go out in all areas and evangelize? Trust the Lord. Trust the Spirit. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. Okay. How about that next doctor's appointment? How about the next time you're standing in Walmart line? You know? Um, I don't know. Uh, next time you... Uh, that, <laughs> the myth. Where is the hardest place... Where is the hardest place to evangelize? Family! Ooh, family is the hardest. Isn't it? So Paul comes in, he goes to the synagogue, he kind of roughs things up, and we should be evangelizing more. And so, I, I like what Sherry said. We need to just start opening our mouth. Just, just live it. Uh, Gail was showing me this, uh, uh, this interview with Greg Laurie, uh, with, with somebody else, and and um, they all had they all had children that were wayward, right? And so, this thing, and they all had children that were wayward. But yet, what they did is they told the truth, they spoke the truth, they stayed on the truth, and they, they, they let them see them live their life, their, their kids live their lives, and their kids eventually hit come back. But um, not always will that be the, probably the case or the story. Okay? Um, a lot of times what will happen is uh, they just keep going, going further and further and further wayward. But that doesn't mean you stop loving your kids. Does it? You still love them. You still teach. You know, still teach. But be the living example for them. Be consistent in your life. You know, and then pray that God will bring them back. You know. Um, briefly here, we'll, we'll wrap up because I'm, I'm, I got started late. But look at verse five. We'll come back to this next week. So. Paul comes in and says, oh, he teaches Christ. You know, he's evangelizing them. He's, he got some to come over, but he didn't get everybody. 
Okay? And this is going to be the case in our life. We're not going to get everybody. Okay? And sometimes there's a time to say, okay, you know, I'm done evangelizing to you because you, your heart is so hard now, you don't want anything to do with it. And so what do they do? Verse 5, it says, But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming what? Envious. Took some of the evil, uh, some of the evil men from the marketplace, and gathering a mob, they stirred up trouble. You know, you can see this going on today. What do they? What do people? Do? They stir up this mob, don't they? Because they don't like your message. Don't do it to them, but they can do it to you, right? Though so they stir up this mob, set all the city in an uproar. Boy, <laughs> you can just bring this into our time right now. People with a different view. Yeah. It's much like we are right now. Right. But these guys are actually making a ruckus, okay? And, uh, and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, what did they do? They dragged out Jason, some brethren, and the rulers of the city, crying out, these are the ones who have turned the world upside down. Who's turned the world upside down? They're... Paul? Or these guys who go in with an angry mob? They were. They were. So... Guess what? Gaslighting isn't just new. It was going on then, too. They turned it all around. Okay, did, did Paul, did Jason, and his colleagues, did they do anything violent? No. Just taught the word of Christ. Who did the violence? The angry mob. Right? He goes, look, these guys are turning, uh, turning everything up uh, inside out and upside down. I go, no, I think you guys are. Okay? Uh, they're just preaching you and trying to tell you what, you know, it's up to you whether you want to believe or not. Why do you got to have this angry mob and turn everything upside down and be so angry that you've got to destroy stuff too in the process and kill people and hurt people, you know. Interesting. We're going to follow, we're going to follow up on this next week, okay? We'll come back to um, Acts 17, verse 5 next week, so. Any last comments? That's kind of interesting, the thing on the news last night. There was an interview on a woman that she was a writer. Uh -huh. She started out, I didn't get all of it, I, I got the middle of it. And she said, well, I've been married to my first husband for 30 years, and we got divorced and a little bit. And then she said, then he emerged as a transgender. <laughs> and now they were back to being friends and had this going on. And, how she was praising him or her and all this, you know, which just follows exactly what you were saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't need to listen to this. Yeah. And uh, it's just stuff you can't believe. Right. I mean, it's, it is. Right. And, and I just, I just tell the truth. I go, you know, that, that's, that's a lie. You See, know, and, and I mean, what, what happened to Budweiser. And I'm the bush. And they kind of started back back to woke crowd and lost five billion dollars yep. in sales in one week. Yeah, go go broke type thing, right? So all right, well let's pray. And uh, uh, we'll just go in and, and worship folk. So, Lord, thank you so much for all that you're gonna do, all you've done today. I pray God that you would just be lifted up. Uh, thank you for your message. I pray God we would get better at evangelism and we'd be more on fire for you. Help open up our mouth wherever we go to evangelize and tell people about Christ because we know it is salvation that leads them um, to a place and a home that is, uh, that is, Lord, just awaiting for us. So I praise you and give you glory today for all you're showing us and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'll see you inside. <laughs> Did you hear? That's one of my favorite